Oh, that's right. I have this too. Oh, wow. That's actually pretty good sounding. Right now. Let's see here. Um, fiddle with that. Ooh, almost right there. That's okay. Hello, folks. Welcome back. For I'm the one, the only, I am a hobo, Tom. And you know what? This has been a fairly action packed week. I've had two days off. I think today was like the one day that I had off where I actually like got house stuff done. Kind of amazed with myself. And I'm getting videos done. If you don't know, I unfortunately had to do a two part video for AEW previously. I had computer issues going on and I just said screw it. And I wanted to fix stuff before I continued on. Um, I got my racing video up, which I do have to send to a friend eventually. Kind of gives you a little bit of behind the scenes stuff. See what the one, the only hobo Tom goes through. And now I'm at a good point with me. Where it's time to do my Monday Night Raw review. Even though it's a little bit late. Before I do that, I have the hobo list to give thank yous for. Let's see here. Goth Teddy. I forget what we were talking about. You know what? Doesn't matter. Because you always beat it into the ring somehow. Because you only get that six count. The Shield. There's only one proper video for you guys, and that's you playing the air guitar.
Black, Black Grant Morris. Morris. Here's Eric Schoen with your briefcase boombox. The ghost of Roddy Piper. This, sir. You know what? This is your last video you're going to get. So you're actually moving up to the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. I have to do that tonight, too. Wow. But you, sir, just got tossed. Onizaka, FTW, you, sir, can crawl out of here. Oh, wow. I have to go do that too now. I just realized that. But that's enough of the thank yous. Again, if you too would like to get your name mentioned on the hobo list and get your own little shout out. What was that? Oh, yeah, I know what that was. Again, find me on the Discord. Chat me up. I think I got everyone last time. It's kind of for the big show. So, yeah, this is just kind of a minor show. You know, I do have to make the ghost of Roddy Piper. That's okay. Actually, you know what? I have to put you in the tournament, too. Jeez, that's going to take me forever. But that's okay. I have some time to spare. Or at least I have days to spare. Because worst comes to worst, I could always put that off till tomorrow. I could do that. I could finish that up tomorrow morning, too. So I could do that. It takes an hour. An hour for the first round. Yeah, I'll figure something out. So let's get to Raw. And wow. What a disappointing Raw it was. I'll tell you what, you're not going to see a lot of good stuff in this. Um, let's see here. There were chants or something. I honestly forget. But it started off with uh, uh, Damian Priest came to give him the open challenge. Then Drew McIntyre and Sheamus said, no, I want my rematch. Then Drew McIntyre came out. Bobby Lashley showed up. Said, yeah, you know what? I want to be, I want to be uh, a Bobby Two Belts. Um, Adam Pierce and Boo Sonya Deville. Boo. Boo. And I already froze my camera up. Boo Sonya Deville showed up. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have all the champions because Matt Riddle and. Randy Orton showed up. It was just a clash of champions. And then Rhea Ripley came out. I don't like nowhere. That was weird. Um, and actually, Rhea Ripley started off the show because the first match of the night was Rhea Ripley taking on Shannon Baszler. Uh, Rhea just jumped Shannon Baszler. Smart wrestling. You want to jump the vicious person. Shana, some great mat wrestling. Good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So pretty to see. I'll tell you what, Shana just seemed vicious. Our knives on the outside. She gave a little prompt. She's like, I'm going to squash everyone. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Rhea hits the inside trail. That was fun. Shana, uh, the apron trap with the hand and the stomps on it. Trying for a Kimura takedown. Kimura takedown is probably one of the hardest. Standing Kimura is probably the hardest thing to get. It's done and seen so rarely. 
the fact that Shane can actually try and pull it off is actually pretty cool. And transfers that into an armbar. Uh, Nia then goes on the outside and takes out Nikki Cross, just, just crush, like squashes her. And there's a good cradle reversal because, and this is what I appreciate about Shannon Baszler. She knows Matt wrestling. She knows collegiate wrestling. She tried Larry for a um, side cradle attempt. That was really cool to see. That got reversed, though, by Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley wins, for the most part, cleanly for the match. The match itself, you know, solid cheeseburger match. But then Nia Jax comes in and just crushes Rhea Ripley. Ah, we'll see what happens there. Viking Raiders and cut a promo. This is going to be Viking Raiders versus Jinder Mahal and Veer. And I think this is where Mason and T-Bar were supposed to be. They just inserted Jinder Mahal and Veer. I heard a lot of weird things about this show. Um, a lot of the matches, like, I think they had the, like, the three announced matches, and those three people did not show up. I know Alexa Bliss wasn't there. Um, Mace supposedly wasn't there. And there was some other match that they were supposed to have that never happened. But the Viking Raiders versus Jinder Mahal and Vera was actually pretty decent. Uh, very strike-heavy match. A lot of isolation wrestling. Again, you expect that from both teams. Both Jinder Mahal knows how to tag team wrestle. I'm sure he's teaching Veer the ropes. Viking Raiders could have a tag team match half in their sleep after drinking like multiple bottles of tequila. But no problem with that. Um, Ivor got isolated. Eric... Oh, he has those big leg kicks. And then there was a, the belly to belly on Veer, which looked amazing. Veer hit a cannonball to the outside. A Viking experience. Jinder Mahal tried to uh, tease the Coloss. Uh, a couple other good moves there by Jinder Mahal. Veer kind of took the, the, the brunt of the action. Viking Raiders win. Can't really complain about that. So this match again. Cheeseburger match. And then probably the high point of this, sh well, I don't know. This is like, this was a really good match. It was Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre versus um, Damian Priest, a triple threat match for the U.S. belt. This was good. Sheamus, he's he's the ultimate heel right now. He gets beat up by both Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest. He's on both both their shit lists, for lack of a better term. Uh, there were some big, beefy chops. Oh, yeah, that's what I like to hear. Again, that's good, and even like that's like getting Vulture esque. It's where a Vulture just hits you, and, and you go to hamburger meat. That's the whole different thing. Um, Drew tosses on Sheamus for a little bit. Sheamus hits an Alabama slam. Again, yeah, being a move thief, that's pretty cool. Um, again, Damian Priest is on the outside. Um. It was a pretty cool Tower Dune spot. Always good to see that. Sheamus goes for the Irish Cloverleaf. No, gets gets beat out of that. Uh, Priest, Damian Priest and Drew, and they start to trade blows. And then it starts to be the spot fest. Sheamus eats a Future Shock DDT. Um, he gets saved by Priest. Priest eats the Bro Kick. Gets bro kick out of ring. In this match, there were good false finishes. Mainly because they used the signature moves as a finisher. Not so much like the actual finisher. Again, that was a great second rope. Irish curse backbreaker. That looked amazing. Um, eventually, Drew hit the Claymore on Sheamus. He went for the pin. Drew McIntyre, then, then again, that was broken up. Uh, Sheamus regains his wits. Big move on to Drew. Drew goes out of the ring. Priest hits um, the crossroads. 
Reckoning, I don't know, whatever it's called. On Sheamus, Sheamus eats the loss, as I kind of thought would happen. Um, good match, Priest retains. I'll tell you what, for a triple threat, this was a surf and turf match. A nice show of respect by uh, Drew McIntyre. Shakes the hand of Damian Priest, says, yep, you're the man. We'll see what happens with Drew McIntyre going forward. Then we have Goldberg. Interview. That was okay. Uh, Reggie was there running around a park with Tozawa dressed in a dog suit and R-Truth with a wig. Great parkour skills. And just kind of really jumps around him and evades them. I only kind of hope he would have gone up the one tower. That would that would have been cool. Then it, oh, this is a bookend raw where the beginning was 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 okay to good, the middle sucked. <laughs> with the exception of one match, mainly <laughs> because it was so bad it was good. And then the end was actually pretty good too. Eva Marie versus Dewdrop. This was absolutely horrific. This was oh the, yeah this was the third event that was going to be scheduled. And this match didn't even start. Drew Depp just beats up Eva Marie. Um, Eva Marie, I don't know why she bothers wearing clothes in the ring. You can see, you might as well see everything on her anyway. You saw the nice camel toe that she was, that, that she has, yeah. Um, only thing was missing was her top was still on. Everything else, like, you don't even need an imagination for that. And that's why my show is not paid for kids. Well, yeah, uh, do drop jumps Eva Marie. The bell never rings. Uh, and then, of course, the referee said Eva Marie cannot continue. Is not physically able to to. Uh, what what's that phrase they use? Eva Marie is not physically able to start this match. Therefore, this is a no contest. They did this already. And it was funnier because her top came off. Her top stayed on. Her bottom stayed on. This, uh, this whole idea is a piece of toast. Let me get Karen Cross versus Umberto Creole. This was actually pretty good. I'll give him some credit. I do like the fact that they have the two different clashes of styles. Carrying cross. Oh! The first opening clothesline. I felt my collarbone break there for a moment. Um, a nice snap suplex and the float over. He's like, you know what? I'm going to suplex you and then I'm going to float over go for the pin. It's a good false finish. It's rarely used nowadays. Suplex used back in the day used to be a finisher. Or at least was a setup for a finish. I think um, Masha Man would suplex someone and then drop the big, big elbow on him. Was that or a backbreaker or a pile drive? Or, no. Pile drive was a finisher. He had the big elbow. He used like the suplex or brain buster. But again, it's, it's rare that you see people start to combine things. It's really good carrying crosses. Hey, suplex you, I'll just float over and go for the cover. That was really good. Again, the Northern Lights bridging suplex. That is one of the prettiest moves I've, I've ever seen. That Canadian destroyer is so pretty when done properly. Umberto, he tries to make a comeback again. Top rope. I don't know. He just flies off the top rope. He gets so much height. However, eventually, Karrion Cross catches him in, the, uh, in a true judo urnagi. Then it's a cross jacket. Umberto has to tap. Not a bad match. You kind of knew who was gonna, kind of knew who was gonna win. It's kind of one-sided. Ham sandwich of a match though. Oh, I think this is next. Is it? Oh, yes, it is. Oh wait, there's a little arcade bro promo. I don't even care because this is where things. Kind of got sloppy. Yeah, starting with the Eva Marie stuff. So we had Nia Jax versus Charlotte Flair. 
wow. A few things I can take out of this. And now, now that I look back at it, parts of it were a shoot. There were some parts that were just plain ugly. It, this match, it wasn't boring. What I, it doesn't mean it was a good match. It just wasn't boring. It was a bad match, but not necessarily a piece of toast. Nia Jax is too strong, is almost too strong. She doesn't know her own strength, and she tries to muscle through things. As I've learned and gotten older, you can't rely on physical strength all the time. You have to use some finesse. Again, there comes a point in, in your career, you're starting off as an athlete, your physical aptitude's here, you know absolutely jack squat though. So, yeah, your, your physical level's up here, your knowledge is like, yeah, I can pick guys up and throw them around. I'm good at that. That's pure physicality. Do I know kind of what to do afterwards? No. With age and experience, the physicality kind of goes lower. But then you're like, hey, I don't have to try and throw my back out every time I toss this guy. If I just twist this way a little bit, it can go. If I push him and he put as soon as he pushes back, I can take him. Now you're getting to that finesse, physicality, equilibrium area. Now, this happens probably after a couple of years. The problem is, Nia Jax, it's been a couple of years, and it's still physical versus finesse with her. It's, it's, it's never moved. It's locked. Every wrestler, again, like them or hate them, as they get older, again, you have physical, finesse, or out-of-ring work, promo work. Their promo work gets better, the physicality goes down, their finesse goes up. And then, the, you, unfortunately, you get to the point where you can only finesse so much, you need the physical work, and that's when you say, well, I'm done. But yeah, Nia Jax really tried to, to muscle things, and it wasn't that great. Charlotte did a great, a great, graping uh, rope neck breaker. That was great. And Nia Jax hit the Simone headbutt. That should just be like automatic finisher. That's a signature move right there. And Nia did some heavy hits. In this, there were so many posting spots. It just seems that they either didn't want to take the move or just wanted to do the same thing over again. So Nia Jax had this horrible looking like belly to back suplex where she like literally just picked her up and like the drop like Charlotte on the back of her neck. Nia Jax, this is not New Japan Pro Wrestling. This is not a neck breaking competition. Just know that. And then it just... <laughs> just got, got, got ugly for a second. You can tell neither were on the same page of what to do. It didn't have the fight... It, it wasn't fight awkward. It was just awkward. Like, one was a step behind the other. And... I don't want to blame Nijax for everything. But yeah, it was probably 60-40 Nia Jax was behind Charlotte Flair. Charlotte said, hey, listen, let's, let's try this. And I was like, okay, shoulder tackle. Well, how do I want to get into that? So it was just that kind of that. It was a really awkward. And then I think Charlotte just like slapped her in the face. Nia Jax didn't like that. She's not going to be upstage. So she slapped her back. So you had... <laughs> you had... Uh, a, a good start, bad, meh, shoot, shoot slapping, more so just getting frustrated and angry with each other, so they kind of like had to slap the taste out of each other's mouth, it just went bad and then it finally ended, um, there was a, oh, Nia Jax hit the slowest looking leg drop ever, um, Charlotte Flair, then she finally went after the legs, and when I first saw it, I think I watched this match, I think, two or three times. And it honestly looked like a shoot. And the one part in the middle where they slapped each other, I'm still convinced that was a shoot. That was not part of the script or program or agreement. It's one thing when 
when two men, Falter and Elia, they said, we're just going to slap each other in the face. And, and, and we're not pulling it. That's one thing. That's the work. It's a stiff, snug work. It's still a work. Those two those slaps by Nia Jax to Charlotte and Charlotte to Nia Jax, that was a shoot. That was like, hey, wake up. Ah, you can't slap me. Wow. So, yeah, that was just weird. And the way, the awkwardness, it, when you first look at it, it looked like a shoot. And then you're just like, well, they just don't want to cooperate with each other. Maybe things were said backstage that they didn't like. Maybe Nia said, F you, Charlotte Flair. Maybe, may, maybe Charlotte Flair says, I'm going to AEW with my dad and my fiance. I don't care. Charlotte, listen, I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Nia Jax said, we're going to do this my way because I'm going to be next. Charlotte could have said, I really don't care. You never know. Um, so, yeah. I'll give it this much. It wasn't boring. It was just bad. And I'd rather have a bad match than a boring match, but still, it's a can of soup. Then we had John Morrison versus Omos. This wasn't much better. When, um, uh, Morrison tried to stick and move, tried to do a little parkour. He eventually got caught. I got mean, close lines to the outside. And you're like, wow, is this just a the, the, the double pick you up by the throat, choke slam? That's it. And I think this was the other match because The Miz wasn't there. Yeah, it was Morrison, supposed to be Morrison versus The Miz. And you're just like, what? what? Why do this to John Morrison? He's supposed to be in a program with The Miz. This, this is a can of soup. Now, the reason I say it's a can of soup is because Omaha still looks like, still looks like a monster heel. So that was good. So I do try to give some context why I'm saying, well, it's a can of soup and not toast, and it's not really a ham sandwich, because this is not the first thing you want Omos doing this to. Although if the Miz didn't show up, for whatever reason, vasectomy, issues, um, coronavirus, who knows. But yeah, not, not, not necessarily the, the thing you want. Then we had AJ Styles versus Xavier Woods. Um, this was actually a little bit better match. Good side Russian leg sweep. Xavier Woods is good with that. AJ Styles. Oh, he's so smooth. The thing is, this match wasn't boring. It was okay. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It just seemed to be a match. And again, there were some botches in here. Um, Xavier Woods still a uh, very good stri striking. There was a little hesitation, a little, a little um, miscommunication about getting... It took Xavier Woods to get AJ Styles in the Tree of Woe for a while. AJ Styles is not necessarily the tallest person. If you're used to working or practicing with someone who's six foot two, or you're not doing it live when, when you're all sweaty, slick and stuff, and, and, you're, and your uh, partner is a little taller, the Tree of Woe is easier. AJ Styles is shorter... Again, you never know if it was a sweat and stuff. Um, so it just seemed awkward. There was another awkward spot. Oh, with Nia Jax, this whole middle of the show just seemed really botchy for some reason. I don't know. That's just, again, my perspective on it. If you want to disagree, please feel free. And again, just like you saw in the beginning of the show, You'll also get your free video. Shout out. Um, Xavier Woods eventually uh, gets stuck in the calf crusher. Couldn't reach the rope. Couldn't tap out. So he had to tap out. That was actually pretty good. So you know what? I thought this was a bad match. I'm actually going to upgrade it. For all the other garbage I saw. I, I think I was just down on this match. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And AJ Styles could probably have a ham sandwich of a match versus a broom, so that sounds about right. 
Then we had the main event. It was RK Bro versus Bobby Lashley and MVP. This was actually pretty fun. Um, RK Bro works over MVP for the most part. MVP takes most of, most of the beating. Uh, once Riddle gets in, you know Orton's not going to take a beating. Or, uh, Riddle's going to be the one who gets beat up a lot by both Bobby Lashley and MVP when he gets his second wind. Um, Randy comes in. He starts to take take it to MVP. It's so good. Uh, he took out Bobby Lashley on the outside. Um, Bobby, again, he has that side neck breaker that looks vicious but good. Again, the big miss. By Riddell for the floating rope for the first time. That was good. Um, then AJ Styles and Omos. Remember they wanted their belt back to possess on the outside buzzing around. Randy Orton goes out there. <laughs> stares, stares down. Bobby Lashley looks at AJ Styles. He picks up AJ Styles. Drops on the table. <laughs> and Randy Orton. AJ Styles is probably just. Yeah just, just drop me bro. Just drop me. So that was pretty cool. Um, Matt Riddell eventually hits the floating bro on MVP. You kind of know that was going to happen. Honestly, the match was good. It was well paced. It wasn't bad. Cheeseburger match. Then Matt Riddell gets stuck in the hurt lock. Um, eventually, MVP eats an, R it's, it's an RKO. Or AJ Styles, yeah, he gets stuck in the hurt lock. Uh, Randy Orton comes in, scares off Bobby Lashley. AJ Styles kind of like meanders in the ring. He's an RKO. AJ Styles just like the, just like the attention. The fans go home happy. They saw the RKO again. It was just a weird Monday Night Raw. Very bookend. Very mediocre middle. Oh, my cell phone's going bonkers now. Let's go check that. I do have a friend I have to kind of keep an eye on. Let's see. Oh, yeah, no. Let's do messages. She was. Give your cat an extra belly rub. And extra belly rub. And a boop. On the nose. There we go. That'll fix stuff up. you over there so yeah <laughs> that was a weird Monday Night Raw um a little news and notes probably oh well I have to go make that video so again if you didn't see my Wednesday show I did a live stream tomorrow I have to close at work so I can't do my impact show Friday this guy Hobo Tom it's gonna be live in Jacksonville Florida at the Veterans Arena I'm going to be watching SmackDown Live. I'll be making that video probably the following week. Again, if you want to see the one, the only, Hobo Tom, for your free video shout-out, if that's still a thing. I should ask my coworker at work if, if YouTube shout-outs are still a thing. I'm just old. But, um, yeah, say hi to me. I'll probably be there about 6.45. I only like to get there, get to the show, get settled, check out stuff. Tranquilo, not, not getting too much of a rush because being rushed sucks. Then, I'm off Saturday, so who knows? I might get that video up probably Saturday. I'm not going to watch AEW Friday night. I really don't care. Um, so, uh, Sunday, 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 Sunday. Uh, if you saw me on the AEW show tonight, I'm beginning to make the wrestling card for AEW All Out. Probably tomorrow. Oh, there we go. My list. I have to make another video. Make my predictions video. Maybe all the guests come in and do that. Who knows? Um, other than that, 
And to thank everyone for watching, please like.